Isaiah chapter 60 verse 1 all the way to verse 8 he said arise shine thy light is come the glory of the Lord is risen upon you for behold the darkness shall cover the earth and gross darkness the people but the Lord shall arise upon thee, and his glory shall be seen upon thee. And the Gentiles shall come to thy light, and kings to the brightness of your rising. Lift up thine eyes, round about and see, all day gathered together. They gather themselves together. They come to you. Your sons shall come from far. And your daughters shall be nursed at thy side. Then thou shalt see and flow together. And thine heart shall fear and be enlarged. Because the abundance of the sea shall be converted to you. Somebody say abundance. And the forces of the Gentiles shall come unto you. The multitude of camels shall cover you. The drum there is of Midian and Ephah. All day from Sheba shall come. They shall bring gold and incense and they shall show forth the praises of of the Lord. All the flocks of Kida shall gather unto thee. The rams of Nebaioth shall minister to you. They shall come up with acceptance on my altar. I will glorify the house of my glory. The Lord bless his word in Jesus name. This morning the subject is rising and shining in abundance. Rising and shining in abundance. We have a threefold objective. One, Understanding God's mind for abundance. Two, understanding God's purpose for abundance. Three, understanding God's way to abundance. That three might be dealt with extensively maybe in the evening. The abundance of the sea shall be converted to you. The forces of the Gentiles shall come. If there is a New Living Translation version, I would like to, to show, please show us that place. Your eyes will shine and your heart will thrill with joy. For merchants from around the world will come to you. They will bring you the wealth of many lands. That's the forces of the Gentiles. The wealth of many lands. As we proceed, I want you to make up your mind for a radical mentality renovation. And there are five facts that we want to establish as we proceed. Number one, God Owns the earth. 
and everything that is in it. God owns the earth and everything that is in it. Psalm 24 verse 1 the scriptures say the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof the world and everyone that dwells inside the earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof the earth and everyone that dwells inside Psalm 50 verse 11 he said for I know all the fowls of the mountains and the wild beasts of the field are mine. Verse 12. If I were hungry, I will not tell thee, for the world is mine and the fullness thereof. Haggai chapter 2 verse 8. The silver is mine. The gold is mine. Saith the Lord. And so the glory of this latter house shall be greater than of the former. The silver does not belong to the devil and his children. The gold does not belong to the killers and the ritualists. The silver is mine. The gold is mine. We are talking about your father's enemies using your father's resources to oppress your life. I want somebody's mentality to be radicalized this morning. I want you to come to a point of mental radicality where you will go out with a sense of jealousy and vengeance to take what is yours. I mean that those who hate your God are using the money of your God to frustrate your life. Someone calls himself landlord over the church property. And he said that if you, if you, you do this or that, or you won't worship here this morning. When we were less than six months old, We are using the Sheraton Hotel. Three churches met in the same area every Sunday morning. It was around June, rainy season. And they said, we can no longer use the place. And it was understandable because the, place, the whole place was rugged. And that the rug was going to be affected by the rain. And you know, people will Will, will, will come in with mud. The Adasis. On Sunday morning, we had to look for where to worship. Where we made arrangement at the um, women's center at that time. We went there and they said the president of the country at that time, a military president, was going to have a program there on Tuesday or so and that for security reasons, nothing can hold there that weekend. We went to three places on Sunday morning looking for where to worship until we arrived at one of those places at um, Rockview Hotel up there. They had never given it out for church. They decided to give it out for that one Sunday only. It was, they, they were taken by surprise. In that day, I told them, I said, they, they wandering. And the wandering is over. That was the message title. Wandering about, looking for where to worship. 
and wondering what is happening over. On the, I think it was after that same Sunday, we got the area one property just like that. Somebody met us and said, are you looking for where to worship? I have a place in area one. Go and look at it, whether you can use it. We're there free of charge for almost a year or two years before we negotiated to buy. And from then on, we, 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 and forever, no property issue. God made me to know that no human being owns any property. We have lands in this territory in hundreds of acres apart from this one. Are you hearing what I'm saying here today? I want something to enter your head today. The earth is the Lord's. The occultist, the cultist, the demon worshiper billionaire doesn't own the money they are using to sponsor satanic ideologies. Let's go on gradually. The earth is the Lord's. God owns the earth and everything that is in it. Secondly, God takes pleasure in the prosperity of his servants. He takes pleasure. Now on this ground, his property is land and approval for the building of a five-star hotel. On this ground, this, this Lord's Garden ground. Drawings and everything are on, is on. God taketh pleasure in the prosperity of his servants. Psalm 35 verse 27. Let them shout for joy and be glad that favor my righteous cause here. Let them say continually, let the Lord be magnified which has pleasure in the prosperity of of his servants. Third John verse 2. I wish above all things that you may prosper and be in health even as your soul prospered. God takes pleasure in the prosperity of his servants. And that leads me to point number three. That God's people Always controlled the, the wealth of their generation throughout scripture. God's people always controlled the world. Of their generation throughout scripture. In the generation of Abraham, Abraham controlled the world. Genesis chapter 13 verse 2. Abraham was rich in silver and cattle in gold. Rich in cattle in silver in gold. Genesis 24 1. And Abraham was, was old and well stricken in age. And the Lord has blessed Abraham in all things. Genesis 24 and in verse 35. We also saw how Abraham, the Lord has blessed my master greatly. He has become great. He had given him flocks and herds and silver and gold and men servants and maid servants and camels and asses. In the generation of Isaac, Genesis 26 and in verse 12, in verse 12 they he sold in that land and he had great possession, a hundredfold blessing until the Philistines envied him. In verse 16, the king of the Philistines said, go from us because only you, you are bigger than our nation. Go from us for thou art much mightier than we. In the generation of Jacob, Jacob controlled the world. And of course you know of Joseph. Pharaoh told Joseph, only 
in the throne am I bigger than you? The money of Egypt is under your control. Hello? Did you hear that? Genesis chapter 41. Let's read verse 41. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, See, I have said to you over all the land of Egypt, and Pharaoh took off his ring from his hand and put it upon Joseph's hand and arrayed him in vestures of fine linen and put a gold chain about his neck and made him to ride in the second chariot which he had. And they cried before him, bowed the knee, and he made him ruler over all the land of Egypt. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, I am Pharaoh, but without me, without you, shall no man lift up his hand or foot in all of the land of Egypt. I am Pharaoh, but you are in charge. The resources of this land is under your control. Ay, 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 ay. In the days of Daniel, the same was the story. In the days of Job, in Job chapter 1 and in verse 3, the man was the greatest of all the men of the east. His substance also was 7,000 sheep, 3,000 camels, 500 yoke of oxen, 500 she ashes, very great household. This man was the greatest of all the men of the east. Is God speaking to anybody? Somebody said that was Bible in recent history. John D. Rockefeller was founder of Standard Oil Company. He dominated the oil industry. He revolutionized the petroleum industry. He set the standard for modern philanthropy. A devout Christian who he taught Sunday school in his church, the Northern Baptist. He supported church-based projects throughout his life. He said, God gave me the money and he didn't apologize for the money he had. He followed John Wesley's principles. We said, gain all you can, save all you can and give all you can. Are you hearing what I'm saying here today? From his very first paycheck, he gave a tithe of 10% and continued doing so throughout his lifetime. He gave, he with most of his giving going towards educational and public health courses, as well as basic science and the art. He became the world's richest man and the first American worth more than a billion dollars. After taking into account of inflation, he's regarded as the richest person in modern history. That is, if all the four top people in the world today put their money together, it's not up to what he had by inflation calculation. He was a, a, a devout Sunday school teacher that became a billionaire. Who said that God cannot do it again? Is God speaking to anybody here at all? The unbelieving world want the church to apologize for having money. But that devil is a liar. Money people have not started from the church yet. This preaching as you are watching right now and wherever you are hooked on, something is going to land upon you that is going to catapult you to another realm. Shout the loudest, amen. amen. Another man was called Henry Hayes. 19th century Christian businessman. He founded the Hines Company in 1869. He based his business on Christian principles and proclaimed that his success was a direct result of his faith in God. He was committed to bringing out the best in people and his company was credited for his fair treatment of workers and for pioneering sale and clean food preparations. Today, the Heinz company is worth about 12 billion US dollars. The most famous product is the tomato ketchup, ketchup with six, 650 million bottles of ketchup sold every year. 650 million bottles. Even if one, one was one dollar, calculate that, that amount. Every single year. Next one was Sam Walton. 
Everybody here may have known of Walmart. Sam Walton was a, 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 a businessman, an entrepreneur. He's, he, he founded the Walmart rental stores with strong Christian background based on ethics and hard work. Walton excelled in school, in college, and in business. A Presbyterian, he was. By 1967, he was earning $12.7 million in sales. Today, there are 10,000 stores, 10,000, not 10, not 1,000, not 100, 10,000 stores with 2.2 million people working for him. Hello? 2.2 million people working in that company, working. He remained the richest man in the world for about eight to nine years before Bill Gates arrived. Bill Gates entered the list the year he died. Are you hearing what I'm saying here? Strong Christian businessman. I don't know of any family, maybe apart from the Ampani family in India, I think his own family has more billionaires in the world than any other family. He has about two or three girls that are billionaires. Alice Walton and then all the Waltons. Alice Walton is on the billionaire list. They showed us the picture just now. It's worth 48.1 billion. It's one of the children. It's another one, another Walton worth something point something billion. James Carr Walton. It's worth 48.4 billion. Another child. The man wasn't just there. He produced that's another one. Samuel Robson Walton. Okay, that's their 48. Okay, no, son. The son. 48.2 billion. Another billionaire from the same father. A mother. Your generation shall be great. In Africa, the only thing parents hand over is generational poverty, generational liability, generational causes. You are just struggling for the problems your father's fathers created. But I prophesy to you today, you are rising and your children shall rise. You will be great and your children will be great. You will be great and your generation will be great. Somebody shout the loudest, amen. Shout the loud most, amen. Lift your right and say, I and my generation shall control the wealth of our generation. We shall control the wealth of our generation. Shout the loudest, amen. Take your seat. Times Magazine, Times, listed him in 1998 on the list of 100 most influential people of the 20th century. 20th century as a whole. Count 100 people that impacted lives. He was on that list. What have I been saying? I have so many things to say. I'm talking, we can talk about James Cash Penny and so on. But the, the bottom line is that God's people controlled their generation's wealth. Throughout scripture, they always control the wealth of their generation throughout scripture and even in recent history. That is point number three. Are you ready for us to go ahead? Anybody ready for his mind to change? Number four. spirituality is combinable with massive prosperity. Combi easily, effortlessly combinable. That you can be intensely spiritual and be massively prosperous. It is possible to be the most spiritual in your territory and be the most uh, prosperous in your territory. It's, that was who Job was. That was who Job was. 
Nobody had more integrity than Job. Nobody had more uprightness than Job. Nobody had more prayer life than Job. Nobody knew God more than Job. And nobody was richer than Job. We have a world of totally ignorant of scripture kind of people who think they can tell the church how to function and tell believers what to know and what to believe. The Bible is our life. We know it in and out. And we keep knowing things every day. All right? They want to scare us away from money. By their rubbish talks, useless, nonsensical philosophies. Blackmail you away from talking about money. Blackmail you away from mentioning things about resources. And say, oh no, the uh, real church cannot, they can't talk about money. Uh, money is ungodly. Money is of the devil. Uh, instead of talking about souls. We are talking about souls. Souls are getting saved. We make altar calls in every service. And the money is needed for the souls to be saved. I want us, I want us to get to become hardened against the opinions of the world and do the mind of God and do the will of God and have a conscience that is clear and void of offense towards God and towards man and be accountable only to God, not unto any mortal, infinitesimal mortal man. Take your seat. I communicating at all. It's combinable. Abraham, who was the symbol of the covenant relationship with God, was the richest man in his generation. Joseph, who ran away from iniquity and from immorality and, from, uh, and could not touch the unclean thing, Joseph was the one in charge of the money of Egypt. I am looking forward to billionaire that can pray in tongues for three hours and five hours and six hours that can cast out devils that can that can lay hands on the sick and they will recover and yet his bank account balance is in six zeros seven zeros eight zeros nine zeros ten zeros in foreign currency somebody shout power Look at your number. Say intense spirituality is combinable with massive abundance. He said they are combinable. It's workable. It's workable. They work hand in hand. They work together. Who is holier than God? Who is richer than God? The one who said the silver is mine. The one who said the gold is mine. Who is holier than him? Who is more spiritual than him? And who is richer than him? Not one. Not one. Some say, oh no, let's not talk about money. Jesus Christ was poor. In fact, he had nowhere to lay his head. Quoting scripture upside down. When he said, the son of man had not where to lay, he said, it means my assignment is too much. I don't have time for sleep. I am permanent. One day he preached for 72 hours. Three days, non-stop. He said, they have been with me for three days. I don't have time for sleep like you people sleep. He had a house. Because when John the Baptist's disciples asked him, where dwellest thou? He said, come and see. When they came, the place was too good. They didn't return back to John. They didn't want to go and continue with John in the wilderness. <laughs> I hear what I'm saying here. Jesus was far from poverty. Far! He employed a treasurer. Do poor people have treasurer? And the treasurer was a thief. 
They confirmed thief and couldn't finish thiefing the money. I am speaking to somebody here today. Every see, so many people, many people wanted to conquer a lot of resources, but there is a, a setback. Let me not go too far. At the early part of my ministry, my foundation is um, SU, FCS, Deeper Life, all these foundations. I was afraid of talking about money. For one reason, let people not say this pastor is also among those money seeking pastors. I shied away completely. I've seen ministers who came to our church and said, Should I raise up? I said, Never. One day God told me, What would have happened if, they, if Elijah? had not received the meal from the widow of Zarephath. I said, wow. I said, that woman, he said that, the answer was obvious. That is, Elijah was too conscious of what people would say. That this useless prophet went and collected the last food of a poor woman. He said if he had pitied her on normal sentiment, she would be gone. He said you, don't, you are not receiving the offering for even the kingdom's sake, but for their sake. For their sake. Elijah could be sustained without the woman, but the woman can be sustained It changed my mind. That was what delivered me permanently. It just changed my mind. You are not, they, they are giving is not to increase church. It's not even towards the, the, he said church and you and everybody can survive but in their interest there is a need for them to release. And I didn't, it didn't cross my mind one day what God said to me that day. Ay, 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 ay. Even then, we still apply some, some level of caution. But now the church shall prosper by force. Somebody say it loud, amen. amen. Say, say after me, I will be very spiritual, very holy. Very humble, very simple, very sincere, very honest, and very rich. <laughs> Say it again, I will be very holy, I'll be very spiritual. I'll be very honest, very sincere, very godly, very righteous, very prayerful, very evangelistic, and very rich. Take your seat in the presence of the Lord. And so, we have just arrived at four things that intense spirituality, we already saw that in the book of Job chapter 1 from verse 1 all the way to verse 3. We saw how Job was able to combine spirituality and prosperity. Finally, number five. More good is done with money than without money. More good is done with financial resources than without it. Summarize. The 
absence of money can frustrate good deeds. Good intentions end in frustration without provision. Good intentions end in frustrations without provision. First Timothy chapter 6 verse 17 to 18. First Timothy chapter 6 verse 17 to 18. He said, charge them that are rich in this world that they be not unminded, nor trust in uncertain riches, but in the living God who giveth us richly all things to enjoy. Now verse 18 that they do good. He has never tried a poor person to do good. Like how? That does help somebody. Give, as, pay somebody's child's school fees. That they do good. That they do good. Willing to distribute. Ready. They do good. Ready to distribute. Willing to communicate. That they do good. Hallelujah. That they do good. That they take up somebody's child and send that child to school. That they do good. That they impact the community. That they do good. That they give water for a community to drink. That they do good. That they sustain the lives of widows and prisoners. That they do good. There is, there is nothing that frustrates impact like the absence of income. Archbishop Peter, who's our blessed memory, said anointing minus money is annoyance. His own, he doesn't uh, hide anything. He says it as it is. He doesn't care what you feel. You are highly anointed, but zero resources. He's full of annoyance. <laughs> See, at this age now, I'm meant to conduct a, a major crusade now. Eh? And I want to use the big Coca-Cola dome in uh, South Africa. And they say I should pay something point something million dollars. But I want the impact to be heavy. It is well. Whenever God wants, the money will come. No. Oh, God wants sins. Take your seat. Take your seat. Is God speaking to anybody here? Too? More good, more good. Go to the poor person in your village and find out how much good, how many people did he help with his poverty? Very rare. That was... That was why when the man that was beaten, the man out the, the, the man on the road to Samaria that, that was beaten to stupor. They beat him, thief beat him. The first person that passed was a Levite. He looked away. Empty pocket. Apart from empty heart, empty heart, empty, he looked away. The priest passed, he looked away. A, a Samaritan came down and said he was on his beast. He came down. The other people were legged these bands. They passed. They were walking. They were trekking. They passed. He, he, he said he walked and passed. He walked and passed. He said the man came down from his beast. You know there is a car called beast. And attended to the man. He poured oil and wine. Money was saved in, in the realm of oil in those days. And then put the man on his beast. And then took him to a, a hospital. An inn. He said, take care of this man. This is deposit. I'm sure the deposit can cover the bill. But in case it doesn't cover, when I return, I'll pay the balance. They allowed him to go because he, they knew him. He was credit worthy. They know him now. They say they know him. When the Bible calls somebody Joseph of Arimathea, it's not that there is no other Joseph in Arimathea. Hey. 
He was, if you say Joseph, there is only one Joseph in Arimathea that comes to mind. Only one matters. You know, in those days, or a robot had no address, or a robot, Tulsa. Anywhere you send the letter from around the world, or a robot, Tulsa, Oklahoma. No zip code, no street address, nothing. Why? There is only one or a robot. If there is another or a robot, he's wasting the name. <laughs> he's wasting the name. Or a robot. Tossa. The male, the letter can't miss. How? They will go straight to city of faith. Say, we have a letter for you, sir. That's how it is now. Poverty can frustrate good intentions. It doesn't matter how interested you are. It's a waste of interest if you don't, if you don't have the financial backup. Take your seat. <laughs> it's a waste of interest. You are interested in, in waste. Am I communicating at all? As, as a matter of fact, there are people who would think you are wicked because you lack money. Not knowing that it's, it's, it's half you don't have. It is half that you don't have. <laughs> it is half that you don't have. <laughs> you know, there are people who say, my brother left to America since 20 years. He is a, he's so wicked. He's not, he's not calling anybody. Some of them is not wickedness. So. It's nakedness. <laughs> it's half that they don't have. <laughs> They'll just be looking at you. Wicked man. I heard it from Russell Conwell. Christian man, he wrote the book, Acres of Diamond. He said that you, you do more, you are more profitable to your generation if you have resources than if you lack. Especially if you know what to do with the resources. And if your heart is good. We have established these five things as facts so that you can trust God to be loaded financially and not feel guilty. And at the end, I'm even going to talk something more forceful. You will trust God that if your father owns the resources, then that devil is a bastard to deny you that resources. My father ran a transport corporation, company. When we were growing up, it is not possible for me to enter the luxury bus from Lagos to Kano in my father's bus and conductor say, where is your money? Not possible. We are in our father's earth and the devil is charging us to pay for things that belong to our father. No, we have to own them. We have to own them. We have to own lands. We have to own territories. Until Jesus comes, we have to own things. Take your seat. Let us go. Even if I was to pay for that vehicle, it is the same father's money that pays for it. So, having 
Having said all that, what is the purpose? Now rising and shining in abundance, what is the purpose of kingdom wealth? Of kingdom abundance? Why? What is the purpose? All right, let me say it this way. Why does God give wealth or give resources to his people? Why? Number one, to fulfill his promise to his people. To fulfill his promise to his people. What promises? They are everywhere in scripture. But I read one. Job, I read two. Job chapter 22, verse 22 to 25. Job 22, 22 to 25. Receive, I pray you, the law from his mouth. And lay up his words in your heart. If thou return to the Almighty, thou shalt be built up. Thou shall put away iniquity far from thy tabernacles. Then shall thou lay up gold as dust, and the gold of offer as the stones of the brooks. Yea, the Almighty shall be thy defense, and thou shalt have plenty of silver. Gold as dust means gold that loses value. So plenty the value is almost lost. Gold as dust means gold that arrives without invitation. In Psalm 112 verse 1, it said, Blessed, praise ye the Lord. Blessed is the man that feareth the Lord, that delighted greatly in his commandments. His seed shall be mighty upon earth. The generation of the upright shall be blessed. Wealth and riches shall be in his house. His righteousness endureth forever. That is his promise. If you fear me, if you do what I say you do, wealth and riches shall be in your house. He will become a liar if that scripture is not fulfilled. He gives, he gives wealth and resources to his people to fulfill his promise. He is the one who promised. Nobody asked him to promise it. Number two, to demonstrate his goodness to his people. Demonstrate his goodness to his people. Every rich father or wealthy father that is a good father will one way or the other make the world to know how influential he is by seeing those who are connected to him. To demonstrate his goodness to his people. In Psalm 27 verse 13. I had fainted unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Isaiah 61 verse 9. All that and their seed shall be known among the Gentiles and their offspring among the people. All that see them shall acknowledge them that they are the seed which the Lord has blessed. Everybody will look at them and say, okay, I know what has happened. God has blessed him. God has blessed him. They are the seed which the Lord. Sir, the blessing of God is real. Very, 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 very is too real. Ay, 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 ay. When you see a woman step out of latest model BMW, sharply dressed, driving into the church premises, or came out of latest model anything, decently, sharply, dignifiedly dressed. Question is, who is that? Whose wife is this? Oh, okay, uh, the husband is the owner of the roofing company, number one roofing company in Abuja. Okay, no wonder. No wonder. 
the, the husband's wealth is reflecting on her life. On the children too. You know how we used to sing in those days? I'm a millionaire. I'm a millionaire. My father is rich in houses and lands. And I'm his hair. Millionaire. I'm a millionaire. I'm a happy, happy, happy millionaire. Because my father is rich in houses and lands. And I am his hair. You are, are not permitted to be moving about pitiable and harassable with a rich father. It's an insult on my own little person for any of my children to wear tattered cloth on my little person. If my wife is wearing what I'm not happy with, I, I condemn it. With the replacement therapy. Uh, if I condemn it, that is wickedness. It has to be replaced. Are you hearing what I'm saying here today? To demonstrate this, God is a good God. And he's hungry for demonstration. Hungry for demonstration. He's hungry for demonstration. He's hungry to let, the, to, to let you pass and let the world know that that man belongs to God. We, by his mercies, God has helped us to a point where we don't beg, we don't borrow, we don't look pitiable. And it is not from today, from the scratch of this ministry. We didn't look at anybody's face twice. Last year, somebody came to my office and he said, I don't know him from anywhere. He's not a member of this church. Um, I just came to give a seed of a duplex to you. And I just brought the papers. I don't know him from anywhere. I haven't met him once in his life. He's not a member of this church. Say, so God laid it in my heart. If you count four or five places in this town that are highbrow, it is one of them. He said, anytime you are able to come and see the place or send someone to come and see the place, let me know. We haven't seen till now. I have not had the time. That is how to be looking for money. That is how to be under pressure. We, are, we have to go and say, where is the place? How is it? Take somebody there. No time yet. So I saw his test about maybe a month ago or so, a few weeks ago. So excuse me, sir. When you are ready, please still let me know. You can go and check on my behalf. <laughs> you, you have the time to check. <laughs> you have the time to check. Go and check on my behalf. Somebody here very soon, your testimony will be similar. Very, very soon, God will cause things to look for you that you didn't look for. That you didn't beg for. That you didn't struggle for. If you are saying amen, say it like a believer. If you are saying amen, say it like a believer. <laughs> that is too abnormal. Too abnormal. Take your seat. Why is God giving wealth to his people? To fulfill his promise. To demonstrate his goodness. Number three. To eliminate the distractions of his people. Distractions. Money worries. 
In John chapter 2, verse 23, all the way to verse 25. 23 to verse 25. He said, but be glad then, ye children of Zion, and rejoice in the Lord your God, for he has given you the former rain moderately, and it will cause to come down for you the rain, the former rain and the latter rain in the first month. And the floors shall be full of wheat, and the fats shall overflow with wine and oil. And I will restore to you the years that the locust has eaten, the canker one, the caterpillar, the palmer one, my great army, which I sent among you. And Go ahead. And you shall eat in plenty and be satisfied, not distracted. And praise the name of the Lord your God that has dealt wondrously. And my people shall never be ashamed. Verse 27. And you shall know that I am in the midst of Israel and that I am the Lord your God and none else. And my people shall never be ashamed. Listen, God says, I want you to face me. I don't want money to distract you. I don't want lack to distract you. I don't want scarcity, shortage to distract you. I don't want you to be in church and be thinking of children's school fees, thinking of house rent. I don't want you to be on, uh, on evangelism and say they have taken us to court because of house rent and landlord issue. I want my people to eat not in scarcity, in plenty and be satisfied so that their praise can flow. You say, and they will praise. Do you read that? Eat in plenty and be satisfied and praise. You know, praise can come under attack when there is pressure. Nothing puts praise under pressure like scarcity. Hence, somebody is in the church, but is not in the church. He's sitting there, he's calculating what to eat after service. Since there is no food, let me turn it into fasting. That devil is a bastard. You fast because you wanted to fast. And you fast because there is a need to fast. Not because there is no food. Am I communicating at all? Lift up your right and say from today. No more distraction. You know. At times it is not just your distraction. But a distraction from Family. Your mother needs help. Your father needs help. Brother needs help. Your relations needs help, need help. Especially if you're a pastor. When God called me into full-time ministry, step into full-time ministry, my number one concern, I say, Lord, I wanted to walk, wanted to make a lot of money and help my mother. Do all I can. Because the woman labored. And God said, go and do what I asked you to do. I will take care of her. And God began to take care of her. And not long, he gave me enough capacity to take care of her to any extent. Enough. So when we're talking about distraction, it may not just be your own. Your younger ones that need to be sent through school. That is, God is saying, I want to bring you to a point where nothing troubles you. Somebody is reaching that realm. That amen can be better. Say amen like a believer. A louder believers, amen. Is anybody getting anything out of here? To eliminate the distractions of his people, number four, to redirect his resources into the hands of his people. God is saying, I own the earth. My enemy's children must not be in charge of the money. I want to put my money in the hands of my people. It is my money. And I have the right to put my money into the hands of my people. 
Isaiah chapter 6 verse 5 where we read he said the wealth of the nations shall come to you the wealth of the, the forces of the Gentiles the abundance of the sea you see the word converted converted I believe in wealth transfer supernatural wealth transfer I believe in it Proverbs chapter 13 verse 22 I'm sure you have read that before a good man leaveth an inheritance to his children's children and the wealth of the sinner is laid up for the just. That is in the Bible. Can't preach against it. Ecclesiastes chapter 2 verse 26 is his, is his twin brother. Is the twin of, of, this, of this other passage. For God giveth a man that is good in his sight wisdom and knowledge and joy. But to the sinner he giveth travail to gather and to heap up that he may give it to him that is good before God. Gather, heap up that he may give it to him that is good before God. What are we talking about? That God suddenly brings you into a position where by a supernatural mystery you stepped into a world that you didn't know how, what happened. Mordecai stepped into the estate of Haman. Took it over. By divine transfer. The Israelites spoiled Egypt. And became wealthy on the wealth of Egypt. By a supernatural transfer. Now even if the transfer doesn't happen directly like that. There are transactions and things that God will do. To make the people of the kingdom heavy. And those who will use their money to sponsor terrorism to make them bankrupt. Can I hear a loud amen? Everybody who will use their money to fight God in this season may their money finish. May their supplies finish. Every drug dealer's money in this season may it finish. Yeah. Somebody say loud, amen. Yeah. Lift your right and say, My father owns the money, he owns the earth. And in the name of Jesus, I must take delivery of the wealth of my father. He owns the money, and I must take delivery of my father's wealth. Somebody say, Amen. Can I go on to redirect his resources into the hands of his people? I'm going to be a bit faster now. Number five, to positively influence kings and people. In fact, I'll make the people plural. All right, people and people for the kingdom. He said, King shall come to, the, to, thy, to thy rising and the Gentiles to the brightness of thy shining. That was Isaiah chapter 60, I think, verse 4. They will come. I want to bring you to a point. Verse 3. And the Gentiles shall come to thy light and king to the brightness of your rising. I want to bring you to a point where you become a major influence. How many of you know that abundance brings influence? Resources allocate influence. Affluence is the twin of influence. People who are affluential become influential. Those who have the gold make the rules. Is, is God speaking to anybody here? In Proverbs chapter 19 verse 4, the Bible is speaking, it said, wealth maketh many friends. You don't need to look for people, they look for you. And as they look for you, you, you affect them. He said, but the poor is separated from his neighbor. They are, they, are, they are accusing him of witchcraft. Say, this man is a witch. Say, this woman is a winch. Winch. Not even witch. Winch. 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 He's separated. But the man who, who has resources, people naturally flow. If you say, come, they run. 
And if you are an anointed godly person, then you run. You lead them to your maker. You lead them to your savior. You influence them positively. Am I communicating at all? Proverbs 19, 6 to 7. Many will entreat the favor of the prince. And every man is a friend to him that giveth gifts. That's called influence. And then he told us, of, all the brethren of the poor do hate him. All, even his brothers, his sisters. How much more his, do, do his friends go far from him? He persuades them with wars, yet they are lacking to him. Am I going to say poverty is an affliction? All his brothers, all his brothers, all his brothers. During family meeting, if he is there and the, and the richer brother is not there, they say we are not complete. He is there, but the, the other one that has money, he is the elder, the, the one that has money is not in the meeting. They say we are not complete. Let's wait for until we are complete. And the junior one that has money, if he is around, and the elder one that has no money is not around, they say let us continue. We will communicate our resolutions. <laughs> that, is, that is how it works. Now you can imagine that elder one that is seated there and everybody say we are complete. All of you, if you don't give your life to Christ, hell is your portion. What did I say? Hell is our portion. <laughs> All right. Anybody who wants to give his life to Christ, lift up your hand. They will lift and if they have three hands, they will lift it. This Sunday, we are in church. Where? We are in church. Even if he wants to pretend to follow you, by the time he comes and hit and the anointing hit them. Basically speaking, as a matter of fact, you don't even have to force them. Because they see that you are wealthier than them and whatever it is you are doing that made you like this they will run to do it that's how it works I prophesy upon somebody through you your family will come to know God because of the influence God will give you the resources God will give you through you your community will know God Say the loudest, amen. amen. Take your seat. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. To positively influence. Number six. To establish. Why does God give wealth to his people? To establish his covenant with his people. Genesis 8, 8 18. You shall remember the Lord your God for it is he that gives you power to get wealth. Sorry, Deuteronomy 8.18. It gives you power to get well, that he may establish his covenant. Then Genesis 8, 20 to 22, and if 22 especially, as far as the earth remains, seed time and harvest shall not cease. That is a covenant. If you release, you receive. So he gives his people the wealth to ensure that that covenant does not fail. The covenant of giving and receiving, sowing and, re and reaping. He gives well to his people to ensure that covenant does not fail. I will bless you and you shall be a blessing. So for as long as you are a blessing, I'll continue to bless you. So God, that's Genesis chapter 12 verse 12 to 3. He gives well to his people so that that word can come to pass. That was number six. Number seven, why does God give well to his people? Seven, to bless the world through his people. He told Abraham, he said, through you, through what I will do in your life, the families of the earth shall be blessed. To bless the world through his people. We already read 1 Timothy 6, 17 and 18. Especially verse 18. Let them do good. Let them be rich in good works. Let them be ready to distribute. Willing to communicate. 
to bless the world through his people. God wants us to live beyond ourselves. How can we bless the world? A widow is taken care of, like that widow and her son. You remember the testimony, the one that they were meant to kill, that couldn't be killed. An orphan is taken care of. How many of you know, now in this town today, this church ministers to every orphanage in FCT, every orphanage, every month. If there is an orphanage that is not being ministered to, it's because we are not aware. Am I communicating? I'm not saying this to blow any trumpet. But if examples are not given, principles are never understood. But listen to this. This is where I'm going. About 99% of those orphanages are Christian church-based orphanages. 100%. This is what God expects his people to do with resources. I don't know of um, the Hindu or Buddhist or whatever orphanage. I don't know of them. They may be, especially in the areas like India. This is what church is all about. Churches build orphanages. They build old people's homes. They build hospitals. They build schools. And bless the world. Church built hospitals contribute to close to 60% of health services in the world. Yes, Catholic has over 50% of health facilities in the world. Then you add Methodist, then you add the Baptist. Presbyterian. That's what we're all about. The topmost schools on earth belong to church. It was founded by church. So remove the church. All those micro, 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 myopic minded people yes. talking against church wouldn't have gone to school. They wouldn't. They wouldn't have no reference. Harvard is a reference. Cambridge is a reference. Oxford is a reference. All our church founded. This is what God wants to bless us. The John Rockefeller I mentioned, his church university, he gave I think $120 million in his time. Where they said, Journalist said, why would you give such money to God? He said, God gave it to me. I am giving it back to God. Any problem? Somebody say amen. Somebody say louder amen. To bless the world through his people. Number eight. To build his cities and his kingdom. When I mean bless the world, I'm talking about ha handling individuals and also establishing institutional things that help the world. Number eight, to build his cities and kingdom. This is the place where churches are built and cities are built. You know that God does not only have church buildings but city buildings. Redemption Camp is a city. Canaan Land is a city. Here is a city. And it is in scripture. Look at Isaiah 45, verse 1. Thus said the Lord to his anointed, to Cyrus, whose right hand I have holden, to subdue nations before him. I will lose the loins of kings to open before him the two leaf gates, and the gates shall not be shut. I will go before you. I will make the crooked places straight. I will break in pieces the gates of brass and cut in sunder 
the bars of iron. For what purpose? To give you the treasures of darkness and the hidden riches of secret places that you may know that I, the Lord, which call you by name, I am the God of Israel. So that you can do what with that money? Verse 13. Verse 13. He said, I have raised him up, the same Cyrus. I have raised him up in righteousness. I will direct all his ways. He shall build my city. From the treasures of darkness that I gave him in verse 3. In verse 13, he shall build my city. He shall let go my captives. Not for prize, nor for reward. He won't charge people for counseling. Saith the Lord. Not for prize, nor for reward. Building of cities, it also implies building of churches and tabernacles. Exodus chapter 35 verse 5. When they came out of Egypt, Moses took an offering from the people for the building of the tabernacle. Somebody say amen. Money builds churches. It builds solid churches. It builds quality churches. He builds big churches. He builds according to the size of the, of the, of the people. If you are looking forward to 1,000 people, you build 1,000. Looking forward, and if you have already 5,000, build 5,000. And if it is 1 million, you build 1 million. If it is 10 million, you look for land that can accommodate 10 million. <laughs> Somebody say amen. Somebody say louder amen. It is an abomination for church to be struggling to build. It's an abomination. Do banks struggle to build a bank? Who owns the bank? The earth is whose? Am I, am I saying something that is annoying somebody? And even if you are annoyed and the annoyance produce advancement, I'm all right. It's not correct to build an evangelistic center or build this and e e struggle. The owner of the universe does not have money to build his house and he owns the house. No, as we are now, construction is on here still and it will go on endlessly. Roads, houses. It will go on endlessly. As for as long as the needs for them are there. Very soon, many of you won't need to come from town to, for where to stay. If you want five star, it is there. If you want middle star, it is there. And if you want uh, one moon, it is there. Yes, we we'll, we'll need to. That's, that's, that's the purpose of God. That's the purpose of God. We serve God in absolute comfortability. Absolute comfortability and dignity. Decorum. We pass through heaven to go to heaven. He said, Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. There are those who pass through hell to go to heaven. That's not his will. There are those whose life on earth is like heaven on earth to end in hell. That's not his will. Thy kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is. Let us experience it a little so that when we arrive there we don't run mad. <laughs> I told you the funny story of a, a, a woman that came from the village and uh, she came into the glory dome and looked around and then went out to the open air and just kept going in and co co coming out, going in. So the daughter asked her, what is going on? He said, I am just going out to confirm that we are still on earth, that we, we haven't died. <laughs> <laughs> because from the village this is heaven <laughs> do 
just to confirm we are still on earth. Every hell situation around your family, around your children, around your life, around your business is arrested now. Shout the loudest. Amen. Take your seat. What number is that? To build the cities and kingdom. And number nine, to spread the, king, the gospel around the earth. Zechariah 119, sorry, 117. Cry yet, say, thus saith the Lord of hosts, my city's true prosperity shall yet spread abroad. I use I use resources to spread my work. If our father in the Lord said, they planted 1,500 churches between the January and around May. And they didn't start in January, they started around March or so. What is the meaning of that? There has to be one, and mostly rural areas, there has to be 1,500 locations. Either bought or built or rented or any of the above, 1,500. There has to be 1,500 set of equipments. There has to be 1,500 set of chairs. There has to be 1,500 pastor's accommodation. There has to be 1,500 assistant pastors accommodation. Hola, hola. You haven't talked about generator yet. And he said these churches are mostly in rural areas. This is, those are mission locations. Hundred percent funding from the center. That is what churches do with money to reach the rurals continuously. That is that church has given one thousand three thousand people paid salary every month. Steady. Somebody say amen. So the gospel is spread, and that is why the devil wants a poor church so that the spread of the gospel can be arrested. I don't know if you understand what I'm talking about. The devil wants a poor church, a poor church, a poor church, a poor church. No more. You gave your testimony, and then the evangelist based in the north here. I, I saw him do evangelistic work for 30 years now. He goes where others don't go. Village, village, village. So we made the commitment to give him something in six zeros to hold the crusades. If you are interested in going, keep going. We are with you. We are with you. He said, from the time the money began to come from Dunamis Church, he began to see the kind of crowd in the crusade ground that he sees in the, in the place here. Then he began to see massive miracles. He had been seeing miracles before. He multiplied. No distractions. He's not thinking of where money will come from. The man to follow the money. The man to follow the money. That is why you should beware of who gives you money. It's a message for another day. Pastor, there are people that will bring offering. God will say, don't touch it. I prophesy. Through your hands, the gospel shall spread through the earth. 
businessmen and women here, through your resources, the gospel shall spread round the earth. The gospel shall spread round the earth. Shout the loudest. Amen. Finally, why does God give wealth to his people? To give voice and force to the gospel. A poor man's voice is not heard. Ecclesiastes 9.16 The poor man's voice is not heard and his wisdom is despised. A poor church has no voice. Now they cannot tell us as poor as the church rat anymore. Rat cannot erect a thing like this. Rat is not behind Canaan land city. There is a new Canaan city coming up around in Canaan land. The perimeter is about 100 kilometers. Together with the whole of the project, that is to drive around. If you left Otoko, you have reached Makodi since. <laughs> or from Lafia to Makodi still, or from Abuja to halfway Kaduna. Voice, voice, voice. In those days, they say it is those who didn't succeed in school that became pastors. Now there are medical doctors, there are lawyers, first class architects, people with sharpness of mentality. Hallelujah. Voice and force. A poor church lacks voice. They can harass it anyhow. Somebody say amen. I've shown you 10 points. Why God want to give us resources. Have you heard to fulfill his promise? It will take me so much time to go through. What do you do? I'm going to ex ex extensively look at this in the evening. But I have two counsels. One. Possess the revelation that the wealth of your father is right for you to possess. Possess the revelation. Use this light to wash your mind. Wash of everything you have been told in time past that is contrary. For the things that are revealed belong to us. Deuteronomy 29, 29. Romans chapter 12 verse 1 and 2. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Use this light to wash your mind. Number two. Accept the responsibility to possess your God-ordained abundance. Accept the responsibility. You need a level of godly jealousy and anger, anger. My father cannot own the earth and I die like a poor. And those who don't know God are pitying me. You need some level of anger to conquer. There are things that 
are not conquered until somebody is angered or angry. That is, this thing is not a matter of chance I have chosen and I shall have it. Somebody say amen. Is there anybody who is going to accept the responsibility today? Even if you are not going to need the resources, get it and use it to help the poor. Get it and use it to build a church. Get it and use it to send the missionary to missions. Get it and use it to send an evangelist to the field. Do you have an understanding? One of the things that I have by his messes is a healthy sense of personal esteem. I feel I respect myself too much to look beggarly, to look pitiable. So whatever it takes under God, I was always willing to do under God to ensure that I'm not in a position. Hey, uh, take. Oh, sorry, take. Is there anybody who is going to get angry this morning? Are you going to say, money? I will deal with you. I will have you. I will have you. I will treat you any way I want. I will use you to chase the devil back to hell. I will use you to deliver the afflicted. Anybody like that, stand up with a shout of amen. amen. Stand up with a louder shout of amen. amen. I have preached to you the message. And the good thing is that the message has a mantle. One Sunday's prophecy gave one man 1.2.5 billion contract, gave another person 2 billion within a week. Mantle is there by his message. Because we are connected to those mantles. My father in the Lord has a double mantle of faith and prosperity. Connected through Kenneth Copeland and Kenneth Hagen. We don't struggle with our realm. There are insignificant people. Very soon, the kind of amount you will be talking about, people will find it difficult to believe. Young ladies with multiple zeros in balance. Married. Even younger people that have not married at all. Where you have to be careful about getting married because the money will be too much. Husbands will be very plenty. Somebody say amen. amen. This message, pick it, listing over and over and other such message, then make the decision. This evening, practical steps will be spoken to you Amen. that you need to take Amen. to step into your destiny Amen. financially. Jesus is Lord. Amen. Lift your two hands. Everybody be upstanding now. Be upstanding. Stand up on your feet. Stand up on your feet. Stand up on your feet. Hands uplifted and give him the praise for what you have received today. Go ahead and honor him. Go ahead and adore him. Go ahead and worship him. Go ahead and magnify him. Father, we praise you. Father, we praise you. Father, we honor you. Father, we adore you. Lift your voice. Go on, talk to God.